Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to some more Let's Play Humankind! This is our very first YouTube Let's Play campaign, the second episode. And again, these first couple episodes are definitely going to be um, f leaning fairly heavily into tutorial kind of stuff, because it's a new game, and I'm sure a lot of people are looking to figure out how it's played. I am far from an expert in this game yet. We've still got a lot to discover, but at least I can tell you what buttons to press. And hopefully, you guys will then figure out what buttons should be pressed or something like that. Um, last episode, we just finished the Neolithic phase. We decided to become Egyptians. And so we're gonna go and want to do a few things ASAP. First of all, we do have some grizzly bears attacking our scouts over here. And they are in fact called scouts now. I think they were, it was, it used to be called a, um, it was called hunting party. And I think these were what, tribes or something like that. I don't remember. But these guys have been renamed to scouts. What I'm gonna do, so we could fight. But our side, our side is considered a little bit stronger. We are going to be on the defense, which means it has to attack us. We actually start in a half decent position because we were going to be uphill and in the forest here. Um, and it's going to be attacking from the low ground. Well, it might try to skirt around, but even if it moves to here, it'll be on even ground, but it'll be on a river, which will give it a penalty. I was thinking I was going to run away here, but actually we might just take this fight. So I'm going to hit, I could, because I could retreat, but I'm going to hit manual battle. So as a defender, uh, so the attacker goes first, but as a defender, we do have another advantage because um, the attacker, unless they kill all our units, are forced to claim this flag over here. So then we go to deployment phase where we can choose where we're going to start the battle. I'm going to start here because it's nice and safe not being on a river. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to hope that this bear just attacks me while I'm here, uh, which is going to give us a fairly decent edge. Okay. Oh, I forgot. I did increase my combat speed uh, to the maximum over here, which is why that was so fast. Uh, I just, I really like doing the, uh, the combat speed a little bit higher. So everything's running at triple speed. So if the animations look kind of weird, you know, and less dramatic, well, that's why. So we did get attacked over here. We can see our health is pretty decent. The bear took more damage. And if we mouse over to the attack, we can see what the situation is. First of all, we do have 13 combat strength. But I think in my head, I thought I had 11 and it had 13. So we have the 13. It only has 11. Um, it has a penalty to its strength because it's damaged already. I mean, we're slightly damaged as well, but not enough to get a penalty. Also, being on a river tile is very bad in this game. Um, that includes in the defense, which may be a little counterintuitive if you used to sieve, where often defending across a river is very beneficial. Here it's not. The bear is standing on a river tile and has a penalty from that. So I'm going to go ahead and attack. We've got a preview. We are going to do somewhere between 30 to 42 damage to this bear. And in return, we're going to take somewhere from 5 to 25. So we'll definitely come out better over here. The other thing I could do is I could just defend. And if the bear attacks me again, I'll have a bigger defensive boost. But it, it might go and take the flag, in which case we'll be a little bit on time. I don't want to move here. Um... I would like to defend the flag in a sense, but you don't lose the battle instantly if your flag gets taken. You've got time to do something about it, and then I would be on a river tile, and that would hurt my combat chances. So I'm just going to go ahead and attack it here. It is going to go there and claim the flag, but it died. So we died in the attack, or we were about to kill it anyway, so again, we had a little bit of time. So we lost some, some hit health, which impedes our combat strength right now, uh, but it died completely. We also get spoils for fighting. We got some money. So we went ahead and won that. Our scout is currently damaged, so what I might want to do is bring him home to heal. Now, you can spend money to heal your unit uh, instantly, although I think you still have to be in friendly territory. Or if you're in friendly territory, you can just wait there and heal over time. So, I'm going to want to bring my scout back. Or, rather than bringing my scout back to friendly territory, what if I just made friendly territory? So this location over here is a recommended tile. It's not very food heavy, but it's got a lot of production because of these mountains and whatnot. You can see, I could look around and compare different places. This has got a total of 29, right? Seven plus 22 is 29. So sometimes what I do is I look at the totals. So this would be 24, which is less, but it's got more food. And sometimes that is appealing. But in this case, you know what? I think I'm happy to grab that area. Um, it's got so much production. It's going to build the outpost in only two turns, which is going to feel pretty good. And then, yeah, I'll be able to heal my unit without going too far away. So I'm going to go ahead and just queue that up. He'll have to get there next turn because entering the river ate all his movement, but that's going to be okay. Another idle army over here. So we're going to do our first ransack action. These sanctuaries over here. You can ransack these sanctuaries. Um, you can also ransack enemy uh, outposts. So this outpost that I've got over here, an enemy could go over and ransack it. Um, you can also ransack enemy improvements as well. If they built a mine or something like that, you know, on some copper, you can ransack that. So we're going to hit that. So we're going to destroy the target. 
And it's giving me, you're, you see, it's telling me it's, we're going to get 10 gold out of this. Let's so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, what's next? I have an idle army over here as well. So this one's mostly still going to do exploration because I would like to spot some more. However, one of the things we could also consider is bringing these units home so that I can get some extra population in our city. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop down here. Good vision. And I could sort of loop back down here, spot a few things, but also plan on returning to the city. Um, I think I'll go the long way around this way. Yeah, I'll go here. I'll jump onto the river. There's another sanctuary we could pop, which is interesting. I've got one more prompt here, which is one of my outposts can be turned into a city. That is indeed the case. So, Parima, the territory of Parima over here, I can upgrade this into a city. The first outpost into a city is free. After that, it starts costing influence. So, claiming territory costs influence, and then upgrading outpost to cities costs influence as well. Still, I think there's no reason not to just go ahead here. You know, sometimes I might be like, oh, I want to build it somewhere else. This seems like a good location. It had decent production. Um, and, of course, we're going to want those horses. So, no matter what, we're going to want this to be... Um, something we can exploit fairly quickly, which we can do with an outpost anyway, but anyway, let's make a city. So, because we are Egypt, our city has been called Memphis, uh, you can rename, oh, right over here, you can rename your cities as well if you'd like, but I don't know, we'll, we'll keep it Memphis, that seems okay. And then we have to queue up some production. So, we've got some stats over here, currently the city is producing 13 food per turn, 16 industry per turn, 3 money, and 3 science. Um, much like if you've played Endless Legend or Endless Space, uh, humankind uses the FIMS system that uh, those games use, which these are the four basic resources, and tiles can produce any of those resources. So again, we can see this tile produces just industry, this one just food, this one produces science and food, but we have to actually like work it to take advantage of it. I'm going to turn off the uh, tile yield icon over here, because it'll keep it a little cleaner, and we can see if I do this, we can see the tiles that are currently being exploited by Memphis. The city tile exploits its own tile, and all the tiles adjacent to it at the same time. So what are we going to build? Well, we could build scouts, but scouts will lower our population. Right now our city has a population of one um, out of eight as its current population limit. Um, and it is currently working as a farmer over here. We can have up to two farmers currently working. Farmers generate six food each. The reason we're getting 13 is we're getting 10 from our exploitation of the tiles. We're getting five from the main plaza, just the city itself. Plus one from plant lore, which is that trait we took in the last episode where we get one food per population. And we get six more from farmers, but then we lose eight food because our people are eating that much. So we get a net gain of 13. That food will accrue over here and grow our population. The industry is used for building buildings. Money gives us money. Science gives us science. Excellent. Um, there is also influence, which is another a resource that can be produced through various ways. That's the purple star, and that goes over here. Not shown in the same way in the screen over here, but you can see it right down here. We get influence. The difference is we can't have any workers. I can move my population to work in different fields over here if I would like. Food seems like a pretty good idea, though, because I would love to see my population grow as quickly as possible. If I were to move it somewhere else, it'd be a population three turns instead of two. So let's leave it there. Overflow is fine. So, if I were to build a scout, it would convert that unit of population to a scout. I would have a city with zero population. That would still be fine, because there's still, I mean, there's still some people that live there, just not a discrete unit of population that we can play with for game purposes. Um, by default, when your population grows, it will be assigned with this balance policy. It will be assigned in such a way that it'll try to keep all four of these categories balanced. So, the next unit of population I get will likely go industry, then money, then science, then it'll probably start again in food, da 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 da. You might want to change the default. You can always manually click and drag people all over the place. You can change it. For example, early on, I quite like to go city growth, because then what it does is, and it says in the tooltip, it does food and industry and then money and science. So as the city grows, it'll keep putting people in farmers and workers until those jobs are completely filled, and then it'll start doing some money and science, unless we get more slots over here, in which case they'll start to appear over there. I don't believe these, um, if you make a manual change, the policy won't move that person back. I mean, it will when I click on, you know, on these things to choose something like that. Um, but otherwise, all it does is, is choose when a new population grows, where it adds it, or if you lose a population for some reason, where to take it away. Um, you can also go down to expert policy, which lets you click and drag in whatever order you might prefer, for example, over here. But I think for now, I'm quite happy with city growth. Focus on food and industry. Get us a nice kickstart. Okay, so that's that dealt with. Let's look at our construction list over here. So we've got currently four different categories. A fifth category can also appear for something called shared projects, which tend to be things like World Wonders, for example. Districts actually show up on the map. You click, so actually let me start from the bottom. 
These public ceremonies are sort of jobs that you just click on and things happen. We can run this uh, feast here. It'll generate five food. And then, so it'll run for a while generating five food. Oh, so exciting. That, you know, and sometimes the public ceremonies have some purposes, but I don't find myself, maybe, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but so far I haven't found myself using them extensively. Next, we've got the units I can build, which we basically talked about. Infrastructure, these are buildings that exist in your city itself. So we could spend four turns building a pottery workshop. This will give us an extra four influence. So instead of making four per turn, which is what we're doing in our entire empire, we'll be making eight per turn. This will let us claim a lot more territory a lot faster. That's very tempting to build first. Then we've got these districts. Farmer's quarters give you food. Maker's quarters give you industry. Um, and then we've got our unique district over here. Now, what they do, if you see in this tooltip, you see um, that second section where it says resource exploitation, and you see the green food is lit and all the others are dark. Wherever we put this farmer's quarter, it will use the food that's on that tile. It will exploit that food. So the farmer's quarters gives you food, one food by itself. It also gives you an extra farmer job. So right now we have a limit of two farmers. This will make it so that we could have up to three farmers, for example. Um, and it will also give bonus food for adjacent farmers quarters. So if you can get a chunk of farmers quarters next to each other, it really scales up quite quickly. But here's the interesting thing. We've got a tile over here that has five food and two industry. If I were to put the farmers quarters over here, you see what it, it's in this little pop up over here. See, it says five food. So this district would generate five food for us, but we would lose out on the two industry that is currently there. And it would also cost us 10 stability. Districts cost you stability for the most part. There's a few uniques that don't do it. And later you can also get a garrison that actually gives you stability instead of removes it. Um, so yeah, so generally speaking, these multi, uh, these tiles that have more than one thing, you can end up like losing out on something uh, in there. That's just part of the reality. That's that's just the way it's going to be. Some districts do exploit more than one thing, um, and uh, the the world wonders you can build later on. Uh, they actually exploit everything on the tile itself. But it might still be good because here's the thing. Likely, like these two tiles over here only produce food, so we'll probably want to put farmers districts on there. And we know these farmers districts give themselves bonuses for each adjacent one. So we probably end up putting one here anyway. To take advantage of all those and that, that you know that's fine um you can only put these districts down adjacent to territory you already have but if i built one here i could then build one here later on and it would expand um they do exploit everything in adjacent tiles as well that's sorry that's something i meant to say um so over here while we would lose the two um industry in this tile this district would also be incorporating the food from these two tiles adjacent to it. And if we expanded the city to this territory, also eat the food over here. So that calculation is is calculating what you would gain in total from eating absolutely everything. So it's actually a pretty smart little indicator. And generally when you click on this, it will highlight whatever is the best site for that tile. If we click Maker's Quarters, you can see it's recommending over here. Um, nice thing about this one, you wouldn't lose any food because it doesn't produce any food, and it would be bringing in the production over here. There's two production and three production. It would be bringing all that in and bringing our production up by six, which is really nice. But if we kind of want to do production, probably what we want to do is build an Egyptian pyramid, which is better than our maker's quarters and does count as a maker's quarters for adjacency. What do we build first? I have no freaking idea. I do want to get more influence so I can claim more territory as quickly as possible, but I think I'm tempted to drop down the Egyptian pyramid first. Because then we can build, do that, and then we'll build the pottery workshop that much faster with extra production. Plus, it gives us a little bit of extra influence, and that sounds pretty good. So we'll go ahead and do that. Boom. So Memphis is building. We are now prompted to pick our tech. I know these first few turns are going very slow, because again, I was going to do it kind of more tutorial style here, but uh, we'll be speeding up as we go forward. These are all the technologies I can currently research. You can also open up the technology tree and um, see everything. For example, we need the wheel. You can see it's highlighted. That's because that's where a unique unit is. It's even got the little laurel reefs over here to highlight. There's our Markabadas. So if we want our unique unit, we need the wheel. And that would mean we do domestication into wheel. I could click here and it'll queue it all up. So it'll do domestication first, then the wheel. But you can see the research time. 60 turns is quite long because it's fairly expensive. It might be best for us to grab some of these basic things first. Um, we might be interested in just making sure we can exploit the horses that are in our territory right away. Uh, that doesn't seem like a terrible idea. And then we could then build animal barns, which will give us food for every horse we have, which we're going to have 
some horses, and that's a pretty decent bonus. The other thing that's tempting early on is maybe the Artisan Quarters, so that we can get, um, or Calendar for the Artisan Quarters, so that we can uh, exploit luxury sources. Carpentry gets us archers early on, although I'm less concerned about that as Egypt because of the Markabatas. And City Defense, we get Palisades to give us better fortifications around our cities. We'll see what that means later on. Also unlocks Warriors, which are definitely an upgrade from our Scout in terms of melee. They're 19 strength instead of 13. But I think I'll go ahead with Domestication. I think that seems like a pretty good idea. We've also already got it partially researched because we had an event that gave us 25% progress or something towards it. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Currently, we're making three science per turn. Okay, sounds good to me. I think we're going to end turn. I know, it took long enough. We've successfully ransacked over here, giving us our 10 gold. Lovely. Hey, let's go ahead and do that some more. Um, I do have enough influence to claim another territory. Oh, right. I'm going to be spending it over here, so never mind. What I'm going to do is just plan another ransack over here and do that. Again, it's probably better to move one tile at a time and make sure, you know, you don't miss something. But I was a little lazy there. I'm going to hit this to complete my queued army movement, which is going to be this unit over here is going to move there and start a new district. Lovely. And I get reminded that I have an idle army here. Well, I may as well ransack this guy for some cash, which we can spend to quickly purchase some units. Or, well, it, we can use it to accelerate production in our city. See, if I had 162 gold right now, I'd be able to instantly complete this pyramid. But I don't, so I won't. We have successfully ransacked some more. This unit over here, what I'm going to do, this outpost is still building, but it still has claimed this territory. No one else can build an outpost in it right now. Let's get this little blue outline, dotted outline to show that that's the case. So I'm just going to regroup this unit. It's going to rest this unit until it's fully healed, and then it'll come bug me again, which sounds really convenient. Um, I think I'm going to go up this hill here. Okay, so it's going to move here first. Let's do it one click at a time. Again, uphill is good for vision. Off we go. Let's go. You got a lair. Okay. So this lair, you can see, is going to spawn aggressive thing. The lightning bolt instead of the peace symbol. And that's what spawned the bear over here. So the lair will produce bears. That rhymes. Um, and they will be aggressive. And they will actually engage us in combat as opposed to just letting them sl letting us slaughter them indiscriminately. Um, still thinking it might be nice to add more population over here. But maybe we do got to keep exploring for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna move out a little bit here. Follow me. Now, going too far is also potentially a problem because the cost to add an outpost in a territory in terms of influence uh, is much higher if it's not adjacent to land you already control. A city means shelter for those who need it. Thanks, buddy. A place to store um, food. So pens for the pigs. We do want to stay a little it may tight not be glorious, to our territory over here with at least one sleeping unit. under trees. All right, idle army over here. Uh, this bear can't actually hit me up the cliff, so I don't actually have to worry about it. Um, although apparently we can beat up grizzly bears, so we're really not worried. Um, this movement is being a little annoying in terms of actually spotting new stuff here, which is a bit frustrating. What I might do with this guy is actually pull him back this way. Oh, I can move, only move one because of the uh, zone of control stuff. I will, well, let me just wait. We'll pick you up next time. Um, because I might use you to claim this territory over here. There's no luxury resource or anything, but again, it is adjacent to everything, so that is going to be cheaper Come over here. and maybe better. Over this way. I'm on it. Yes. All right. Well, kind of frosty over here, but it's not it's not the end of the world. This guy's fully healed. Then I think what I'll do is I will move out. Kind of in this direction. And see what the world has to offer. This mammoth is still annoyingly positioned, but we'll do that. So, if I want to claim this territory, for example, click here. Say I'd need 70 for this. 120 over here. It's because of the distances involved. But over here, you can see I can claim this territory for just 20. Which is why I keep saying, like, I don't want to necessarily go too far away. But we're also limited by what you the train is doing for us. A first emblematic quarter. It's a symbol of power. Emblematic. And a lasting memory of this yeah, era. not unique. Emblematic. Go ahead. Be smug. I think I said exemplary before. Actually, is it possible the units are exemplary and the districts are emblematic? 
Maybe they're all emblematic. Anyway, I'm just going to keep saying unique because, come on. Okay, I think, yeah, you're still out kind of just exploring, seeing what you can see, especially along the river, I suppose. I may as well walk this way. It's going to be about the same. Eh, maybe, maybe it didn't go quite as far. We could grab the one with the silk. Maybe I will wait. Now, the other thing I can do is I can attach a district. So, Alcabar, or well, Alcarab over here, right, is exploiting this territory over here. It's getting some food, which is going to give some population. That's not really going to do anything in an outpost. But what I could do is I could attach this outpost to a city. It's going to cost me 30 influence to do that. And everything that it's exploiting over here would be added to Memphis. Now, doing that is going to slow down my ability to claim territory, right? Because it costs influence to claim territory. On the other hand, Memphis will be empowered very, very quickly. I don't know what the correct balance for that is. I feel like I do want to make sure I claim at least two more territory. Um, ideally, I might want to... If I could get to a total of six, I think I'd be especially happy. Um, but four, I'd say, is the minimum I'm comfortable with. And uh, five would be just a little bit sweeter here. I really can't come back here because of these cliffs. So I guess this guy's going to end up doing a lot of bonus exploration. All right, All get right. down onto the river. Then we'll see what we're doing after that. So Memphis is done. It created its pyramids over here. Uh, its industry output went up like crazy cakes. Uh, we did get our second unit of population, which did get positioned in industry here because it, city growth tries to balance these two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the food instead and uh, do that because I do want the city to keep growing a little bit faster. And its industry base is actually pretty good because of our exploitations. I can build the horse ranch over here. This will give us two food, two science. Not a tremendous amount, but it will give us access to horses as well. And once I have horses, I can build the animal barns, which is going to give us a bit more free food, which is also nice. Um, and then give us even more great adjacency for farmers' quarters and stuff like that. Uh, again, I can get the pottery workshop, though, for influence. You know what? Let's get the pottery workshop first, because we are going to be under pressure for influence. It's definitely going to be a thing. In terms of research to go next, yeah, the wheel does have my unique unit over here, but it's pretty expensive to research right now. It might be best just to, like, if we get access to the granary via the calendar, just plus two extra food per farmer is kind of sexy. Uh, we do have some forests, so getting the lumber yard would give us some extra production as well, which is very appealing. Irrigation is really strong. Flood irrigation along the rivers, we get extra food. And then the public fountains helps with stability, which we haven't really talked about much yet. Until I get the silk, there's not really a luxury for me to exploit right now. Um, Lumberyard. Uh, irrigation's a little expensive. I guess I'll get carpentry first. And then potentially we're gonna start going for the wheel, especially if I can assign a scientist to get a little bit of a boost. Okay. We're, we need to claim some territory, since I'm not attaching a city. My interest is going to be in that. Um, although, again, I think my priority is to make sure we get this silk. So I'm going to move... Come over here. That's a cliff or not. Follow me. Okay. I think you're coming back, buddy. You can't get up this cliff very easily, so tell you what, you actually are... I'm going to change my mind. You are going to keep pushing outwards here, just to see what we can discover. We haven't even met a neighbor yet. Okay, someone has just become Babylonians. Follow me. Let's say... Okay, Got I'll go up it. here. I want to see a good number of tiles in this territory before I actually plant down the outpost. Over this way. I want to try to pick the best spot. I don't necessarily feel like I have to see every tile before I make the decision, but I do want to see the majority of them. Come over here. Off we go. Oh! Still got an old curiosity here, so let's go and take a look. See what we get. Ruin Shrine, giving us some money and influence. Oh, that is very appreciated. In fact, I have so much influence right now, I really... I probably should have just merged. I wasn't sure how much I'd have. Okay, that is actually going to be just fine to go and do that next turn. 
I am going to go and attach uh, Alcarab to Memphis. What's going to happen when I do that? You can see it doesn't... It, once I get out of here, it no longer sells Alcarab. If I open this, it does remind it over there. We can detach this if need be. You don't get your points back. Um, but then, because sometimes you want to change what territory is attached to what city and whatnot. Your emblematic district over here, you can only have one per territory. I didn't have the option of building a second pyramid here, but I now have the ability, if I want, to build a pyramid over here. Now, is that where I want to build it? Because I can only build the one. Do, do I want to save this for a farm or something? No, I think that's a decent idea because there's actually decent productivity uh, from, you know, the forest and things we can take advantage of over here. When we get the uh, water mill later on, that's going to be okay. And yeah, because it does give um, it does give some, some influence as well. I think it's a great pick early on. May as well get them down as quickly as possible. Plus, you can't build your emblematic districts once you uh, change uh, culture. So we definitely don't want to miss an opportunity to build as many pyramids as possible. So we're about to claim this territory. There's more silk over here, which will be good for trade later on. There we go. Memphis has just grown. We might want to take a peek. It assigned it to industry. Maybe we're happy with this. I don't know. I think I'm still going to throw it in food. Try to get the city to grow as aggressively as possible early on. I think that sounds good. Got some units that were still moving. You over here. So, okay. So this territory here isn't adjacent to any territory I already have. I'm going to move it into here and look to probably claim this. Just because that's where I am. I do like to claim sort of in a forward direction, but it's not really in the cart. Maybe I do pull you back to claim something in here. That's a lot of production, but I think I will get you to go here. Now, this one's going to cost 30. Each one costs more as they get built. It gets more and more expensive. You've done that, which is lovely. It's a... Uh... Okay, that's just going to be a lake, so I don't feel the need to continue down this river. We go. Oh! Discovered the breathtaking Kin Mountains. Excellent. I think they gave us some science for doing that. Come over here. Hop in over here. So you're done that. I might just put you on Auto Explorer. Or I could consider merging you into a city. And if you disband your unit in your territory, it will join that, that outpost or that city. But I think what might happen, these two might merge up and then continue doing exploration, but be a little bit safer. Now, at some point, we're going to want to start thinking about how we want to advance to the next era. And to do that, so the, the first era, you just need the one star. Every other era after that, you need seven stars. <clears throat> so we need to pick up seven stars. There are 21 available stars over here. You always have one of these. So there's seven categories, three stars available in each. One of them will always be elevated here because this is linked to your culture. So as the so for everyone, they have these builder stars where you build districts and once you get to a certain number of districts, you earn a star. You also gain a certain amount of fame for completing those stars. If it's your particular um, star category for your empire, so Egypt, their builders, they value the builder stars more. So they gave us a little bit more fame. There's a couple of different ways the game can end. Well, actually, more than a couple of different ways the game to end. Um, but one of the one of the more common ways, probably, I think, is going to be a time limit game because it actually is a pretty tight time limit in the default setting. Um, and then it's whoever's got the most fame wins. So squeezing out a few extra fame points is really good. So as Egypt here, I might be incentivized to look for some builder stars. But likely we're going to get a, f a smattering of different ones, right? Because before I get to the th all three builder stars, I'll probably have gotten at least four techs. I might have gotten a little bit of fighting, for example. Um, my population might have grown, and so on and so forth. So you want to keep your stars in mind as you make your plans. Although I'm not sure that's really impacting anything I'm doing quite yet. See, so yeah, I'm wondering about just merging these two and having them explore together, or join the city. I don't know. I think for now, I'm just going to send them up here. We might just keep claiming some territory fairly aggressively. I did, uh... Yes, that's city. That's my border. This one is not. If you zoom out enough, your actual city locations are in dark blue. I do kind of wish that this might be a little bit more visible. Maybe like a like just dots throughout or something like that territory does go stripey when it's occupied in a war so stripey for ter for just outpost doesn't work but maybe a few dots throughout just it'll make it a lot easier for me at a glance to see what's what but i don't know maybe i'll go and harass the developers let's go up hill here so we've got some saffron very exciting i could actually claim this 
Oh, it's nice. Um. Now, that's interesting. So it's only 40 over here. Distance from our city. And if it's disconnected, it's even more expensive. So I really should actually go and maybe just grab this, just because it's so cheap. Or what we could consider doing is this. We could save up enough influence to turn Subra here into a second city. And that is pretty tempting. I do want to get a second city. At the start of the game, you have a city cap of two. If you exceed that, you do start to get an influence penalty. So you generally don't want to exceed it. The first one is not bad. It's only minus 10. Um, although that does mean a lot right now. In, later on in the game, that's not as meaningful. But it gets very expensive very quickly. So I guess I'll just keep exploring for now with these units. Ooh. Um, but I think I will probably... This one, this area is still fairly cheap, right? Yeah, at 40, and it's got some things. Now, I don't have to worry about anyone stealing this area. So if I'm not worried about someone ninjing this area, then maybe I don't have to prioritize it. And maybe I want to get a city first. Perhaps. Yeah, you know what? I kind of like this idea. Especially, like, um, not... not taking an area that is going to be most likely go to me. In fact, there's something to be said about venturing forward and finding territory that my the other civilizations are claiming, the other players are claiming, and um, denying them that by uh, ransacking their outposts and things like that, for example. Okay, let's, um, let's get the horse ranch finally. It's only going to take one turn. It's going to open up a few options for us, which is going to be nice. Go. Horse range complete, and we've researched carpentry. Um, I'll build the animal barns over here because it will give us an extra five food because we have one horse, and it is okay. So there's the horse here. I was confused about this before. This is the horse, it shows that we've got horse in this city, but the only thing that really matters is over here, which is horse in the empire, which is where the animal barns bonus will take. So even in cities that don't have horses within their own borders, the animal barns will still work because of this. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. The extra food will be very nice. It doesn't even tie up a farmer. Uh, I want to hit this. I'm going to go yeah. back to moving maybe one tile at a time here. Let's go. Okay. Pop that. Get some science, a little bit more influence. Thank you very much. That is appreciated. Yeah. Move here. I'm going to group these two together. There we go. That's for you. I want you to stay on the river. We can tell the river's there. Even the, the game pretends that it can't see that tile. We know there's a river there, so we want to be smart about it. Could go for the wheel, unlock the Markabata. But the calendar and city defense is really cheap. We get calendar at least. Adjacent to our actual city over here. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I know, I want to make uh, Super into a city, but that actually seemed like a pretty good pickup. Alright, come back down this way. Up onto the river, maybe. Well, oh, there's a discovery over there to be picked up. So again, I don't know enough yet still. I mean, I've, I've got some things figured out, but in terms of the overall flow and tempo, if there's things that we should be rushing for. I think I should be rushing to try to claim territory that's adjacent to my city, because that is definitely cheaper. So that would be quite nice. Um, I want to explore, may, and you know, it might be worth doing the exploration down here rather than popping that. Because we're already on the river, the speed's gonna be really nice. Who knows what we might find. Oh, and we get our first civic choice. So, we're going to get a wide variety of civics over the course of the game. Actually, there's another one over here as well. Um, and often there'll be two choices. Now, there's two things that you get from it. Uh, first, there's an, sort of a, a big bonus. So, if we enact natural right, we get more influence on in our main plaza. It's just our city. Or, we can go over here with Divine Mandate and get some faith. Um, which could also be good for religion. I think I'm going to go influence. The other thing it does is it influences these sliders 
towards different sides. When the sliders are in the middle over here, they give you 10 stability everywhere. As they move towards the edge, they shift to another bonus. So here it gives us a bunch of science, whereas over here it gives us more faith. Um, so I'm going to go uh, natural right, mostly for the influence, but also the science is pretty appealing, so we'll get a little bit more. It's not going to mean much right now. Um, and early on, you might have stability problems. You might intentionally try to keep as many of these in the middle as possible. Why I'll, was this? I'll take that. That's going to be fine. It did cost me influence soon. to do that, but We've it will pay for itself pretty it's quick. It's our place. We've also got legitimacy over here. Minus 50% create outpost cost. So yeah, let me grab that as well. Again, it cost me some points, but we all of a sudden right get a huge discount to Not planting to down outposts, which mine. is mostly what I want. Although I still would like to build a city, but claiming tiles is going to be pretty darned important. Um, I guess I'm going to keep scouting down here. I guess I got to put a cut in this video. Folks, thanks a lot for watching another episode. Uh, I've got to go and rest my voice for a half hour before I go live stream. So uh, I'm going to go do that. Uh, almost certainly what we're going to do next time is plop another outpost over here because it's adjacent to a city, so it should be nice and cheap. But we we'll want to explore inside to see what the best tile is for placing that. It's, 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 it's very hard to stop playing this game. You know, something, something, one more turn. Thanks a lot for watching, folks. I'll see you next time.